Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX Capital, and welcome to our class on trend patterns and chart patterns and price action. Now, if this is the first time you've joined us at ETX's webinar, we're a regulated provider, so I'm required to give you a risk warning. Trading in binary options or in the financial markets may result in the loss of the amount deposited. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk and seek advice if you, if necessary. ETX Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation or construed as advice. All traders must understand there is a high element of randomness to the markets, and therefore they will experience both winning and losing trades whilst following a trading strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. Now, for those of you that aren't that familiar with the ETX, you're joining us through the Internet. ETX is a fast-growing financial services company, and we are based in London. We are authorized by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, and we're also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. So welcome to our class on trend patterns and interpretations. Now, trend patterns and interpretation are one of the most critical parts of what's called technical analysis. And technical analysis is virtually anything that has to do with, with charts and price action on a chart. Technical analysis refers to the study of the financial markets based on price movement. It uses the assumption that the price of a share or an asset reflects all the information about that asset, including market sentiment, as well as its perceived value. Charting refers to technical analysis that is performed through careful inspection of price data for, identifi for identification of well-known patterns that emerge in prices, for example, head and shoulders, channels, triangles, and wedges. Now, these chart patterns occur on a regular basis, and by using this repeated historical analysis of these patterns, we can predict the market psychology and price movement. Chart patterns are well documented in technical analysis literature and are based on the psycho psychological phenomena that, becur that occurs between buyers and sellers of financial instruments in liquid markets. Pattern formations do not form a trading system, but rather provide an indication of future trend of a price of an asset as the price breaks key psychological barriers in the form of support and resistance lines. Charts and patterns are all about being able to predict where there should be some market action or reaction. What price is critically important to the markets? Okay. Now there are numerous types of patterns, all named according to the shapes and the price graph that form between the support and resistance lines. The general types of these patterns are, include triangles, channels, wedges, and head and shoulders. Head and shoulders being one of the most well-known of them all. Now, the names simply indicate or tell you the, the, the shape that these price movements are forming. The most popular and the one that happens the most often is a triangle. Now, a triangle is formed between converging support and resistance lines. A negative sloping triangle or a negative sloping resistance line indicates a reducing level of profit taking. So a negative sloping triangle. Okay. With a positive sloping triangle, the price levels are squeezed between or squeezed into a corner. And in any of the triangles, this is what's happening. We're looking at pent-up market demand in the corner or the center or the edge of the triangle. Price moves in and gets smaller and smaller as the buyers and sellers are becoming indecisive. And at some given point, somebody has to take control of the markets. And the way that the price breaks out of this, these triangles that they form will give us an indication about 
which direction and how much momentum they can add. Because a certain amount of momentum is added to the price change in the direction of the breakout. Now, there are some established rules that will help you understand how to use these patterns. Because there are, you could look forever and a day to find these. There's also some easy ways to find these. Today, because all of this can be done with mathematical calculations and computers can look for them, there are many pattern recognition systems or apps or robots. Not, for tra not that it will do the trading for you, but they will tell you when a form has a formation has developed or a pattern has developed and can tell you when it's getting close to a, a, an emer you know it developing into a pattern or when it breaks out like auto chart is one of the most well known uh, trending systems is all based on chart patterns and breakouts from the trend lines and you don't have to spend your life scanning all the assets around the market to look for these but when you see them on your chart whatever you know, trading system you're using, they do tell you something. Now, again, the most popular are the ascending and the descending triangles. There are specific variations of the triangle that can occur, namely ascending and descending triangles. An ascending triangle has a horizontal resistance line and a descending triangle has a horizontal support line. So you can see them right here. And they form into triangles. One of the angles, the, in this case, it is the support line underneath that's a, maintaining the price above. And you have a, a angular resistance line. They're coming to a point here. In this case, you have the, resist, the support line underneath coming in the angle and the resistance line moving in a parallel or you know, a straight line, horizontal line. Okay. There are slightly different interpretations of these. Now, the funny part is you can have both an ascending or a descending triangle in both an uptrend or a downtrend. They do appear and they're known to appear in both. It's important to note that an ascending triangle can also be found in a downtrend. So the combination of the name and the triangle of the triangle and the market trend is deceiving. Thus, the financial asset needs to test the resistance level twice, and the asset closing price needs to be higher than the previous closing. In, or, in other words, the closing price has to follow the rising trend line. Now, there is a way, once we've established the rising trend line, and we have our support line, there is a way to use the distance between where we start the ascending support line and the ascending trend line and where the, the distance between the, that and the support line can be then mapped onto a chart. And so the distance between the rising trend line and the, rising, and the resistance line can give us a projection. So if our resistance level had a 1 and our trend line had a 05, and this is just the price, hypothetical price, then our predictive value would be 1.5. So we could predict when it breaks out at this point that it would move an equi di equal distance to this, what, this distance it moved here. So we had 0, 0.5 to 1. And then so we could project our momentum at our breakout if it breaks out upward to equal that amount. Now, next we come to volume. When in an ascending triangle, volume usually contracts. Although there are a few numbers of cases that will show that volume has not contracted, but the pattern has been displayed. This has been signified by the blue line at the bottom of the chart. As you know, volume appears down here. As price moves into the center of a triangle, you tend to have less and less trading action. And it's important. It can happen the other way. But you have to, to 
minimize the set of rules or variances you're, uh, you're willing to allow. So me, I always tighten down. And so if it happens the other way, I just ignore it. I don't trade it at all. I make believe it's not an actual triangle. But my rule of thumb is the price moves into the, the center or the, the point of the triangle. Volume should be steadily dropping because what it's telling you is that the traders are less and less sure and they're moving into this congestion. And that should see a corresponding drop in volume. If you don't have that, then I would say that their market is not interpretable at the moment. I'm sorry, I just got to get my marker off here. Okay, then we go into channels and rectangles. Okay. Channels are simply down moving support and resistance lines. Rectangles are up moving or sideways or horizontal support and resistance lines. And these support and resistance lines are not support levels. They don't come from Fibonacci. They really come from eyeballing. Okay. When you can see two common swing highs or swing lows or a price that the asset has in common that it keeps touching, you can then establish your support and resistance lines for your triangles and your rectangles and your channels. Okay, similar to a channel, a rectangle is a pattern formed between a horizontal support and a resistance line. Rectangles and channels are sometimes referred to as flags and pennants. And you, you see these, the names interchange. So when you see something that's called a flag or a pennant, you'll know they're talking about rectangles and, and, and channels. I just happen to like using triangles rectangle, you know, I, I, I like the things that I understand. If you want to use the words flags and pennants, you're welcome to. Then we go to wedges, okay? And wedges are simply just like triangles, except they're for, formed between converging support and resistance lines. However, where the support and resistance lines in a triangle have a one positive and one negative slope, the support and resistance lines of a wedge would both have either a positive or negative slope. In other words, in a wedge, they're moving together to form the triangle. In a triangle, you have one, I don't, I don't forget my mathematics, but there, you know, what do they call them? Isosceles triangles, right, right angles, left angles. But these are the two lines moving into converging the other. The other ones, a regular triangle has a flat line and a support line or a flat line and a resistance line moving into it. The most common wedges are found as breakouts in the opposite direction of the wedge. That is bearish breakouts in a rising wedge and bullish breakouts in a falling wedge. And then we come to the most well-known and actually one of the most reliables. You'll hear about all the time, head and shoulders. Head and shoulders is called that because it forms a head and shoulders pattern. You have the left shoulder, the neckline, the head, the neckline, the right shoulder, and when price comes back down to the neckline, which is this, this is called, you can then predict a breakout and a movement farther down. Now, there's some rules about the shoulders, and they should be equal distance. They could be a pip or point off from one to each other, but you don't have one, you don't have a crippled person on its side. There's also some very specific some people have put very specific rules to how much the head should be over top of the shoulders. Some say 50%, some say 20%. They're all types of variations. I like to see a clear, distinct head and shoulders, but I don't do a mathematical calculation to say exactly how high the head should be. When you see a pattern form and it forms a beautiful head and shoulders, you know that you have it. Now, the popular head and shoulder pattern is essentially a triple top pattern, except that instead of all the peaks hitting the same resistance level, the head peaks slightly higher than the shoulders. Some investors have specific beliefs about the amount of the bearish fallback that should occur between the tops, with some allowing for 10% loss between before the price returns to test the resistance level again, and some requiring at least 15%. Regardless of opposing views, these patterns are very popular among traders and analysts, and they predict trend reversal with relative reliability. 
Signal strength is bolstered by agreements from other indicators, such as waning volume as the trend nears its exhaustion. Okay, then we also have the inverse head and shoulders, which is just the exact opposite, which is a flip over of the normal head and shoulders. Okay. Now, the nice thing about head and shoulders is they do have a calculation that goes together. And it, you, do can, you can put this on a chart that tells you something about what you're seeing, because everybody out there is looking for ways to predict price movement and how far an asset might move. So to calculate what your target price would be, would be, and that's where you would put your take profit point, your sell point would be at exactly as it breaks the neckline in the final formation of the right shoulder. So you can see in this chart, you have the beginnings of an up movement, it forms the left shoulder, comes back down and establishes the neckline here, which is your support line forms the head, comes back down to the neckline, forms the right shoulder, comes back down to the neckline and breaks through. When it breaks through would be your sell opportunity. Now, how far will it break to? Where is your target point? Okay. That's important because you need to know where to put your take profit. And to calculate this, you use T is equal to N minus H minus N. Okay. Simple, the neckline which is whatever price the asset was trading at. But let's say the asset here was at 1,000. This line was established for the neckline at the price of that asset. When it hit the head here, and let's say hypothetically we're using gold that's trading at 1225 today or something, but we're using 1,000 for an easy mathematical calculation. So say the head formed at this height at 110. 1,100, I'm sorry. So this is no numbers. The neckline was established at 1,000. The head, which was developed here, because we haven't even come to the right shoulder yet, was at 1,100. So what we would do is we would take, our target would be T minus the neckline, or equal to the neckline, 1,000, minus the head, which was 1,100, minus the neckline, which was, gives us 900, 1,000, no, it gives us 100, I'm sorry. 1,100 minus 1,000, so we have 1,100 minus 100, which gives us 900. So our target price would be here at $900. So if we sold out, sold when it broke below the 1,000 level, we would be looking for a target of, 11, of $900. So it's got a set of calculations that you can use to make trading decisions. The inverse head and shoulders is the exact same thing, just upside down with the same reverse calculations. Okay. And you'll find that when you establish a head and shoulders pattern, okay, they, are very, they don't form that often, but they are popular, that they work very well. After this, we go looking on chart patterns for multiple tops and bottoms. And the most important of these are double tops, double bottoms, but they happen, a double top and a double bottom happens quite often. So as far as being reliable, they really aren't because they just happen a lot in price. Now, when these patterns form, it's important to see where they form in relationship to an existing trend line. You know, if the head and shoulders pattern appears in the middle of a horizontal or congestion action, it's really not telling you anything. If a triangle or a descending triangle, they need to form in very specific relationships to price movement. So you would have a different interpretation for an ascending triangle in an uptrend or if it was in a sideways horizontal trend. Okay. So be careful of that. But a double bottom, double top, you should watch for it, but they're not all that critically important because they happen often. Now they also have a formula 
but I've also found that formula is not reliable. Okay. But when we go to triple tops and triple bottoms, then we start looking at something that's important. Because a triple top and a triple bottom is developed by putting support and resistance lines on your chart and the price traded in this channel, hit that resistance line, bounced off, it came down to that support line, went back to that resistance line, came back down to the support line, back to the resistance line, and then came down to that support line again. Okay, Most likely, it is about to break out. Three times is about the best percentage-wise of when price should break out of that channel, when it has made three hardcore bounces in between. So a triple top and triple bottom are reversal patterns that touch either the support or resistance line three times before reversing their trend. This is a strong indicator of a trend change, uh, a stronger indicator than a double top or double bottom. Look for a strong initial trend and a significant breakout in order to confirm the reversal. Okay. Now, a triple top has a similar mathematical calculation which has some, uh, in personal use, has some reliability. It's a very simple calculation. But it's basically the height of the move off the support to the resistance level, the, the top of the, the resi resistance level, okay, should give you an equal, when it breaks through, an equal distance down. Now, it can go way farther. But when you get the sell signal, so you, what you have is, your target is equal to the support line, which is right here, minus the height of the pattern, which is the equal distance between here. So the top of the height is whatever price it hit here. And what you have is you, your decline should be an equal distance or your target price. What I'm saying is, the asset is not necessarily going to stop its downtrend, but if you're looking to sell into a triple top, you would look to exit the triple top at the target price. A triple bottom is the exact same thing, flipped over. Now, it's important to measure the quality of a pattern is the trend that precedes it. You should always be looking at how the price movement is or what is going on with the price movement when these patterns develop. It does not matter whether the trend is bullish or bearish, but it's the consistency and, dur and the duration of the initial trend that partly determines how well-formed the pattern is. When you have a well-formed, what you're looking at is not a pattern. When you have a well-formed uptrend or downtrend, Okay, which is fitting the explanation of down there. Thrust up, ease, thrust up, ease, thrust up, ease, because markets move in peaks and valleys. And these peaks and valleys should have an A, B, C, D, and E as price moves up and then falls back down. The price never falls below the previous thrust. Thrust back up, comes back down. You have a very strong trend line. That gives your pattern formations that form in this movement a much higher quality. When you have a very weak trend where price is just bouncing, price is moving up, but it's just bouncing all over the place with no formation, and it's not on a very strong uptrend, it is the, the formation of the trend patterns isn't as valid. It, the quality isn't as valid. Okay, trends and breakouts. The pattern is said to have a broken out or have broken out once it has crossed either the support or the resistance line. If the pattern broke out in the same direction as the preceding trend, it is called a continuation pattern. If the breakout is in the opposite direction, it's called a reversal pattern. For example, a pattern described in a bullish reversal triangle would mean that it is a bullish signal. That is, the breakout was through the resistance line upward. Because it is a reversal pattern, this means that the preceding trend was in the opposite direction of the breakout, or the preceding trend was a bearish. Now, 
when price breaks out, the value of the, tr of the breakout and the momentum is based on when it makes the breakout, how strong that one price frame was when it broke out. The stronger the breakout, the stronger the indication. Now, we have several popular patterns. Okay. And you can use the angles to form your stop loss, your take point, your entry point, and your take profit point. Okay. These are falling wedges, bullish rectangles, bullish pennants, rising wedges, bearish rectangles, and bearish pennants. Okay. These six patterns are the most reliable of all of them, but then we have to add in head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders. Now, Let's talk about what a pattern is. A pattern is a series of data that repeats in a recognizable way. It can be identified in the history of an asset being valued or other assets with similar characteristics. Patterns often include the study of sales volume as well as price. Patterns can occur within a downward or upward trend or as marking the beginning of a new trend. There are bottoming, topping, and continuation patterns. A follow-through day pattern is used by some analysts to identify market bottoms. A head and shoulders topping pattern is popular among day and swing traders. Continuation patterns include cup, cups with handles and flat base and three-week highs, tights. Okay. These, are, again, are just exotic names or, or names given to the pen, the 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 visual look of flags, pennants, or whatever else. We stick with the triangles and the the um, the channels and the wedge and the wedges. Now, we also can combine these with Fibonacci pattern types. Fibonacci retracements are also used as part of a trend trading strategy. In this scenario. Traders observe a retracement taking place within a trend and try to make low-risk entries in the direction of the initial trend using Fibonacci levels. Simply put, traders use this strategy, using the strategy to anticipate that price was a high probability of bouncing from the Fibonacci levels back in the direction of the original trend. Now, so what exactly are retracements? They are price reversals that are pro produced temporarily within a larger price movement. Their most important feature is that they do not last for long before price resumes its original direction. You need, you need to know how to distinguish price retracements from the more serious or permanent reversals by using the following key differences. Retracements do not produce large increases in trading volume. In contrast, major reversals are generated by intense selling by usually professional financial bodies. Retracements do not generate many notably, notable chart patterns, and the ones they do are mainly limited to minor candle, minor candle patterns. Reversals are very serious events and can create numerous famous chart formations. The retracements are temporary and do not normally last for longer than a week. Reversals have much longer lifespans and may last for weeks if not months. Retracements are created shortly after large price movements have initiated while reversals can occur at any time. So the big traders, the institutional traders, can affect the movement of an asset and we have to be able to interpret what is going on. Now, retracements that and people confuse retracements with reversals. Retracements are simply temporary price reversals, and they take place within a larger trend. The key here is that these price reversals are temporary and do not indicate a change in the larger trend. When you can see this, you can then predict where price movement will be because what happens is too many traders think that it's a reversal and exit an asset when instead of getting a 200 point profit move they get out at a, a or they panic 
and they sell at a 50-point panic move, or they just get out of the markets because they think the markets have reversed on them. And so it is key to understand that when a retracement is happening as occurred as against a reversal. Now, there are many ways to notice this. Volume is one of your key levels. Noticing that there are very few chart patterns forming is very good. Time frame is helpful. So there are many things that you can look at, and candlesticks will be very indecisive. You'll have very small bodies on your candles. Now, I'm going to take you over to some charts I've compared for you, and we're going to take a look at what some of these look like. And even I've dropped, I think in one of them, I've dropped some Fibonacci retracements, and we've got some channels, on, uh, some triangles on there. So let me pop these up on your screen for you. So on this chart, we're seeing how you would trade a trend reversal descending triangle. Now, it's difficult to see the price in the back of the, of the plane, but what we have is this is actually the U.S. dollar, and it's in a four-hour chart. And in the small movements of the price action, you can actually see the channels that were formed, and you see how the price bounced up, came back, bounce off came back and then broke out it actually formed another channel here and each one of these trend lines and we had our longer term trend lines on here and each time could have given you a sell or a buy signal and this is a very easy way to actually use your cha your channels to trade an asset in this case we saw a flat channel we had trade prices going up and down, so you can buy and sell by identifying the lower degree of the pattern on similar smaller time frames, like 15 minutes for daily ranges. And then you can, for medium term, you could look for longer trends. And then here, we actually saw a channel formation, and we were waiting for the breakout, and we would have traded that breakout. Now, actually, here on our GBP-JPY chart, here we have the, a beautiful formation of a triangle. What do we have? We've drawn on here a support line using three swing lows and brought it forward. We also drew on here a resistance line using three swing highs. It doesn't have to be three. We could have used two. It has to be, in this case, a form three. And we're looking at price getting pent up and pushed into the center right here. There's no rule that it can't break out here or here. But we're also looking at this with other indicators, looking for a buy or a sell. We have our long-term support and resistance on here. And we would expect at this point for when the price to come down to here, to touch up here, come back down, bounce off, come back down. Now. Where This is where price is standing right now today, and we're looking for a trading opportunity. So we're looking for price to get congested in the center of the triangle. Okay, lastly, we have here a beautiful triangle that just formed on the Euro CHF in a four-hour chart, and we are predicting at this point, a breakout. Now, we were in a downtrend. We're expecting, we have a very strong triangle here, and we're expecting a breakout or a reversal, and we're predicting our reversal level to come back to here, which would have been the high, almost the high of the formation of our, of our triangle, in equal, in equal distance from here. Okay. And this is what we would project. Okay. This is only a forecast. Okay. We need this to go with other things, but this is where the asset stands right now, and so this is going into Monday morning. Now, let me bring some something up on the screen. Now, a lot of this, you say, is complicated, involved, time-consuming, and everything else. 
But if we go over to investing.com, and there's a lot of places that have this. It's not unique. You can go to auto charts, but investing.com has them for free. And you they, they will scan the markets for you. They'll do the work for you looking for the patterns. So if you go up here to technical indicators, go over here to chart patterns. Now, remember, the markets are closed, so there's not much coming out. But right now, you can look at any of the, the any assets that are forming triangles that are either completed patterns or emerging patterns. And you can also get this from downloading AutoChartist. Or if you just go over here to the asset, click on the asset, open up the current chart for the asset, go up into technical analysis. And if any trend patterns are developing, it will give you a forewarning. Okay. So it, there are very easy ways to do this. Actually, let me take you over to my auto chartist. Let me log in for you here. Uh oh So remember, it's the weekend. But see, auto charters, their computers automatically look for the ascending and descending triangles. They're going to give you a current price and a price projection to help you see this. And you can see on the right-hand side the quality of the signal, what's expected, a continuation, how clarity it is, how long ago it's formed. And then you can also go down below and see all of the assets that you want. So we're in commodities. You want to go to Forex. And... Auto charge is not sold. It's available through your broker. And so you can just click on the line with the pattern. Here's a triangle. It's going to bring the chart up for you, show you the movement of the triangle, and see where the projection is. And you can pick and choose what assets you want to watch. But what it means is it's scanning the markets for you. You don't have to spend your time searching for these patterns. And it puts it on the charts. So you can then look on here, see where it's forming, and then go draw it very quickly onto your chart with these exact numbers and all of these projections. And it makes looking for these trading pattern signals very, very easy. And if you notice on here, they give you what is expected. So let's take a, here we have an, an actually let's use the USDJPY. Now, there's all kinds of apps and downloads here, because today it's, it's all been put into mathematical calculations. I don't know why it's... Okay, so we can see on here, what are we looking at right now? We're looking at the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, and we can see the triangle forming, and we can see it's projected to continue sideways, not even in any direction. Okay, here is a perfect um, a pennant or a wedge moving in because remember you have a downward angle and an upward angle. So they're converging on each other. So that makes it a wedge. And based on the, the current pattern, it's expected to fall down to trade down to 128.490. Now, these aren't gospel. They're not laws. And you can't use any of these without using them with other indicators. But you can sure use a system like this that will scan for you and find everything for you, give it to you. You can drop it right on your chart so you're not spending hours searching the marketplace for it, and then combine it into your trading system. So thank you very much. I hope I just pointed out something for you to think about. Um, if you're trading on the MT4 platform, all of this is available. You can uh, upload AutoCharter's plugin directly to the MT4 platform and use that. And I think uh, uh, there's a couple other trend pattern indicators. And they'll give you everything. They, they, they do everything I told you. They're already calculated for you. Then all you have to do is combine them into your trading system and make your decisions to what you're going to trade. But you have to understand and learn what each one of the patterns is trying to tell you so that you can incorporate it and understand more fully than just following somebody's arrow 
and trading blindly along the route. So thank you very much. Have a great Sunday, and we'll see you again later in the week. Bye now.